Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Thursday, December 14th. Set myself up here with a little tripod action so I'm not holding this thing in my hand. So we had another up day, but the market pulled back from the highs and uh, actually dipped negative for a brief period of time. And uh, Dow was up, NASDAQ, S&P up a little bit. So we'll see what's happening tomorrow. That's December 15th. That is the quarterly corporate tax train, which I've been telling you people about now for three months. Now I went and I looked back at September's tax train, you know, September was the last quarterly corporate tax train and that was a 60 billion drain. And we had about a, almost an 8% decline in the market at that time, um, but different conditions, okay? What happened yesterday with the Fed, that triggered a lot of monetarist buying now. Like you've got, you've got a dynamic in the market right now where all these monetarists who have been bearish and, and calling for recession for so long and predicting a market crash because of uh, the Fed's monetary policy and waiting and waiting and hoping for the Fed to pivot and all this other bull crap, the Fed gave them, in essence, what they wanted yesterday. So you got a lot of FOMO buying going on. You got a lot of short covering going on. And that is just a technical dynamic in the market. It has nothing to do with anything fundamentally relevant. This is kind of a stampede effect. So what I'm saying here is that this tax train now may not result in that big of a pullback. I went back and also I looked at December 2022's tax train. That was an 86 billion tax train. Both of those, the last September and December 2022, uh, those drains were recovered fairly quickly, but don't forget, especially last December, we were still in the Fed rate hike paradigm. I mean, that was still going on. So that contributed to a lot of nervousness and, and you know, selling all the time and bearish sentiment. I mean, again, what happened yesterday, and I hate putting qualifiers on things because I, I come to you all the time and I say, this is gonna happen, I don't equivocate. Uh, I don't think it's fair to you. I, I don't think, you know, when I, when I see others doing this out there, and most of them do, I'm talking about other analysts or, or market observers or traders, you know, it's always qualified. Yeah, well, uh, it could go up, it could go down, it could stay the same. I think it's going to go up, but it could go. I don't do that. I, I don't equivocate. But I will say that this pullback may be somewhat shallow because you have this dynamic, as I mentioned, of this the, the monetarist now flipping to the bullish camp, and this could persist for a while. There's also an argument to be made, I don't make it, but it's out there, that a lot of these pricing formulas, uh, you know, especially like, um, uh, forward cash flows, this, 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 and that. They factor in interest rates, um, you know, uh, discount, discounted cash flow and stuff like that. They factor in interest rate. I frankly don't subscribe to these things. I think there are assumptions built into that. And I think that the, the main assumption built into a lot of those formulas is this kind of uh, the loanable funds theory that, you know, there's a finite amount of money and the interest rate affects how it's going to be allocated. That's wrong. Okay. But I think a lot of these models have that assumption built into it. So it affects how people uh, behave. It affects how they invest. It affects how they look at future returns or the way they, they, in their, at least in their minds or, or through the, the lens of that formula, it's how they kind of price what their investment is gonna look like in the future. And they adjust 
whenever interest rates change. Now, what am I talking about? It's the same thing when, it, when the rates were going up. The initial period when rates were going up was negative because you had that adjustment of portfolios based on a discounting of future uh, cash flows, okay? Because the rate was going up. I said that we would reach an inflection point at which time the interest income transfers would offset the discounting effect, you know, that, that people were reacting to. Same thing might happen here, that the, the, the discounting effect on the upside now, where the reaction on the part of investors who invest using these formulas, um, you know, that might have to run its course. And like I said in my video yesterday, what there were three things that are uh, the effect of rate adjustments. I went through that yesterday. I, know, I said, number one, they're price adjustments, okay? Number two, they're a redistribution of, of income, all right? And number three, they are fiscal adjustments. And in the case of rate cuts, and it's very clear to see, like I've posted many charts in the past, not on this channel, but I, you know, I've, I've put it up in various other locations, I've sent it out to subscribers, in the case of rate, rate cuts, there is a significant decline in personal interest income. Just like when the rates were going up, there were, and it's something I've been talking about for the last 22 months, you know, there is a significant increase in interest income transfer. So this, I can tell you, this is something absolutely that the monetarists are not paying attention to, but basically they don't even understand it. They, again, they, they operate from a single variable understanding. Uh, they have no, uh, no you know, concept uh, of double entry accounting, basically uh, of just basic accounting. Uh, for every debit, there, there's a credit. For every liability, there's an asset. For every debtor, there's a creditor. I mean, they just, they eliminate one half of that uh, whenever there's any kind of monetary policy change, you know, whether it's on the downside, whether it's on the upside. Uh, you know, so I can tell you right now that they are not understanding that eventually rate cuts, look, the Fed hasn't cut rates and there there isn't anything priced in the market at least until March of 2024. So we're still getting tremendous interest income flows. But in the bigger picture, rate cuts, if it comes to that, will reduce, and I think I gave some numbers yesterday. I said a um, uh, 75 basis points rate cut, which is what the Fed anticipates next year in 2024, that'll subtract 25 billion in interest income flows. Uh, the market right now is pricing in 125 basis points. That's five rate reductions next year, that'll cut 41 billion in interest income flows. So they're, they're absolutely not paying attention to this. They have no clue of this. To them, it, it's, you know, it, it's the punch bowl being put back on the table. It, it's the free money. It's, you know, uh, juice in the market, all, all these crazy figurative language terms that they use all the time to explain these things which is ridiculous. So right now I'm focused on the uh, what's coming tomorrow, which is the quarterly corporate tax drain. Uh, I'm looking for a pullback in the market, as I've been telling you guys, and then there will be another buying opportunity. I think right now, given the environment where we haven't had any rate cuts, we're still getting large fiscal transfers. I think we will eventually see uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P follow through, and maybe even the Russell 2000 follow through with, with uh, what the Dow Industrials has already done, which has made a new all-time high. I think we'll see that for those averages as well. So this will be, if this happens, this will be a welcome pullback. It'll allow you to, uh, you know, my portfolio is at an all-time record high, okay? 
that's probably because each time we had a dip over the last 22 months, I was adding to my portfolio. Uh, and that's what you have to do. I always say that like, if you tweak your own investing approach to just be more aggressive when the market goes down in terms of buying and don't freak out and panic and sell like every other, uh, you know, um, sh all the sheep, that's what they do. People freak out and panic and sell. That's, uh, where are you going to go with that? Where do you expect to go with that? A simple tweak in your investment approach where you be more aggressive when the market goes down and you allocate more to good companies, okay? Companies that are gonna be around. You don't have to be some guru stock picker that's gonna pick the next Amazon or, or uh, Apple or whatever. I mean, that's great if you could do that, but it's not necessary. Warren Buffett never did that. And he's like number five on the all-time rich list. I, so many times I have said this, that he never invented anything. He never created any new industry, any new business. He invested in the stock market and he invested in very big, well-known companies. But his forte, his strength was knowing when to buy. It wasn't even knowing when to sell. Like his partner, Charlie Munger, who just recently passed away, rest in peace, Charlie, he was once asked, like, Jolly, when do you sell? He said, I, why would I sell good assets? It took me a long time in my life to learn this. I was always very quick to sell as soon as I had a little profit. And then I saw, you know, that asset go, go rising up over time to levels that I never would have dreamed of. Don't sell good assets. I mean, the approach should really be to sit around patiently and wait for times when investors freak out and they panic and they react emotionally and they sell and you swoop in there and you buy up these good assets and you keep doing that. You keep doing that and you keep doing that and over time you will build up a tremendous amount of wealth. The stock market is a beautiful thing, folks. It's a beautiful thing if you know how to use it and you know, I, I even, I shouldn't even say if you know how to use it because it's not very hard to know how to use it. It really all boils down to what I say all the time is just personal behavior. It's knowing how to act yourself, knowing how to do what you need to do to make it happen. The stock market's right there for you. It's handing everything to you on a silver platter. And people take that platter and they throw it in the garbage. They trash it. They stomp on it. They throw it out the window. They're afraid to touch it. Oh, it's going down. Meanwhile, they're running out. As soon as Black Friday happens after Thanksgiving, what are they all doing? They're running out to buy TV sets and this and that and everything. Because why? Because it's on sale. But God forbid, if the stock market goes on sale, sell everything. It's the end of the world, it's the crash. And then when it goes up like crazy, it's like, we gotta buy. Like, imagine going into a, your favorite store or going online to Amazon and saying, you know, I really like Amazon, but I wish you guys would charge me more money. If you charge me more money, I will definitely buy. I don't like these low prices. I'm afraid of these low prices. I'm not doing anything. Worse, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you all my stuff that I already bought at the higher prices. I'm gonna give it to you so you can resell it to somebody else who's smart. I mean, that's the behavior, let's be honest. Makes no sense whatsoever. It's an easy, easy game. I mean, it's incredible. It really is. The invention of the stock market is an amazing wealth producing thing and people just they sabotage themselves why i have no idea because i can't say that the behavior is kind of unknown or people don't understand they do they act it out in real life in, in their consumer patterns but they don't do the same thing when it comes to investing it's i mean you could write a thousand theses on this and, and 
it just still, it doesn't make any sense. I can't figure it out. But actually, you want to know something? It's a good thing because that behavior, that affords us opportunity. That gives us opportunity. That gives us these things that people are so willing to throw away. Okay, so I shouldn't complain, right? I should be happy about that. And I am happy about that. I'm really happy about it. It's kind of like my gripe with MMT. It's like, why don't these people understand? You know what? And then I sit back and I think, gosh, it's a good thing that they don't understand. Some of you sometimes even remind me saying, Mike, you know, be quiet. We don't want people to understand because that takes away our game. You're absolutely right. You guys are smart. You guys are smart. All right, everybody, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. We'll see what happens. We should have some fun with this tag strain. Hopefully it gives us an opportunity to buy in once again. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, have a good one. Bye.